Now, my general rule with systems of equations is if both equations have x's and y's, then I'm going to Desmos. And we can go to Desmos here. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I feel like I struggled with this a little bit more when I did it the first time. But if I go to Desmos, I've already typed these things in for us. And so we're looking for the point of intersection. That's the solution. Well, that's another word for intersection point. And so uh, you got to just be careful here because it's everything's a little bunched up. So if I zoom, then I can really see it. And yes, it is on the on the y-axis. So my point here is zero, 0 0.42857. So that's a that's a fraction I don't recognize, right? Or 0.42857. It was a bunch of threes, 0.333. I'm like, oh, that's a third. That's easy. So, okay, that might be a little bit of, a, of an issue, but let's take a look at the X. That's pretty easy because if the X coordinate is zero, then eight times zero is just zero. So I'm just doing seven times this whatever, 0 0.42857. That should get me the whole thing. So I can even just do that in Desmos. So seven times point four, two, eight, five, seven. See, this is why I wrote it down is I know that when you type, it goes away. So 2.999. So what do you think? Should we bubble? Should we answer 2.999 or should we answer three? What do you think happened here? You think it's genuinely 2.99999 or do you think that that Desmos has to round off or shorten the, the decimal somewhere and that it probably continues in such a way that if we multiplied it by seven, we'd get three. I hope you would realize that it's the answer is three. That is the answer. That's it. But I, I know what the SAT is doing here, right? Is they want us to go to Desmos. They want us to not understand really what we're doing and just to become kind of to let the calculator take control. And we never want that, right? We always want to make sure that, you know, we recognize we are the humans in this equation. The calculator is there to serve us. And so we need to understand what to do with the information that the calculator gives us. And we need to make sure that we are putting actual good information in. So just double check that you typed the equations right. I did. These are correct. So there you go. I would definitely do this with Desmos, I think, uh, because even though it's got a little bit of a, a question mark for a second there, it kind of resolves itself. Now to do this with the, um, the, I guess the algebra isn't so bad either. And you can kind of tell like, wait a minute, 8x, 7y, look, I mean, these equations have that in there. There must be some sort of shortcut. But I wonder if people are going to spend a long time looking for that shortcut and not ever really finding it um, because you'll, you, it, it is kind of still hard to see. Like, I, I don't, I, unless I'm wrong, I don't think there's a way to just quickly get 8x plus 7y to pop out of these equations if I, if I add them or multiply them in some way. I think I got to just do it like the long way. I, I, I guess what I would do is I'd add these two equations together. Because if I do that, the 8x is kind of go away, right? Because 2 times 8x, negative 2 times 8x are going to cancel out. And then this is going to be 8 times 7y is equal to 24, right? No, div no div distribution necessary here. So 8 times 7y is 24. So if I divide by 8, I get 7y is 3. Now, I know that that's the answer, but technically at this point, we wouldn't know that because we don't know what 8x is. So we, we wouldn't really be able to kind of come to that conclusion. And I also think that out of habit, so many of you are just going to divide by 7 and get that y is equal to 7 thirds, or sorry, 3 sevenths. Wow. See, this is why I don't do algebra. 3 sevenths. And then you'll just kind of end up with a fraction for no good reason because we don't need y. We need 7y. We have 7y, right? We have what we want. But now I would technically need to go back to one of these equations, plug in the 7y or the 3 sevenths, and then solve for x. But again, I don't want x, I want 8x. So let's just do the top equation. 2 times 8x plus 4 times 7y, which is 3, is 12. So 2 times 8x, don't, don't multiply, keep it as an 8x, plus 12 is equal to 12, subtract 12, subtract 12. And then for whatever reason, when people get like X or Y equals zero, they freak out. For some reason, they're like, oh, I must have done something wrong. Guys, zero is a number. It's a number, just like two, just like negative seven. They're, they're all numbers. It doesn't matter. So zero is, is a number that you can get. And so basically, at this point, what I would do is I would divide by the two. We can see that that's not going to make a difference. We still, we still get that 8X is zero. And, and again, I could solve for X and get X is, is, is zero by itself. It's not that hard. But remember what we wanted was the 8x as a unit. So keep it as a unit. So there you go. 8x is 0 plus 7y is 3. So we get 3 again. I, I don't know. I don't see a real benefit to doing this algebra. I, I don't think that it gets me anything that Desmos 
doesn't. And I think Desmos is a little safer. I just think that this is this requires understanding of algebra that is a little bit more advanced. And many people understand algebra only on that most surface level of solve for X, solve for Y. And so you're going to kind of go a little further than you need. You're going to do more work than you need. There's the risk of messing things up. So yeah, and he, I'm going to stick to my theory. Anytime you've got a system of equations and they have a solution, they don't have any solutions that's different, but they do have a solution. Just if both of the equations have X's and Y's in them, then go to Desmos and find a point of intersection. And, and I, it, there might be little things with decimals that you got to worry about, but it should be fine in the end. Just remember to round if you think the computer is rounding.